Hello, beach friends. It is dark out because it's super early and we're heading to Sandabel. Now we're going to Blind Pass, which has a kind of small parking lot. So that's why I wanted to get over there really, really early. Going through the causeway now. The part that had to be repaired is really just kind of these Jersey barriers and you'll see the, um, the orange barricades. And then the part that was original and really didn't get messed up, well, it just looks fine. So that's kind of what the causeway I'm sure you've seen if you're paying any attention to the rebuilding that's going on down here. The causeway is fine. You can traverse it. Um, you're not going to want to bike it or do anything like that. And the thing I'm noticing is that the Sanibel Lighthouse is not illuminated. That is something I always look forward to seeing when I come over to Sanibel. And there is a curfew in effect from 12 o'clock until 6 a.m. Now, it pretty much looks like what I expected to look like. Sanibel, and as far as I can tell so far, has done a really good job cleaning up. That's the Lazy Flamingo. Here's some of the castaway cottages. And it really is a punch in the stomach to see just devastation but that's not what we're here to talk about we're here to talk about the good part and what we can do here the positive things so Santa Bell has opened two of its beaches I decided to go over to Blind Pass the other beach that is open is Tarpon Bay and we're going to talk about that in a second now you can pay they have an app that you can download on your phone and you will be able to pay for parking so they're all set up you can absolutely come and visit here what might you encounter when you come here? Well, Santa Bell's beautiful, so it will have lovely beaches, and I'm gonna be combing to see what kind of fun things are left here. Now, I do encounter something, this is not mine. This is a fabulous Scotch bonnet found by somebody else, but we'll at least get to take a peek at it. But friends, I had the most magical couple of hours, I don't know how long I was out there, I kind of lost track. But it was amazing, and I cannot wait to share it with you. So, if you're ready to see what's out there, let's go to the beach. Okay, so we are here at Blind Pass. This is the first time that I am back on Sanibel since the island was closed. There are signs here warning you of the red tide and also warning you of debris and stuff that might be in the water. So I am wearing shoes for sure. I will not, well, frankly, I haven't been going barefoot for a long time. I just like to protect my feet because I do tend to walk for quite a distance. So kind of taking it all in. Here's Blind Pass. Here's a nice pile of shells. Awesome. And I really wasn't sure what to expect. I was nervous and excited. Okay, so we're here. Kind of getting the lay of the land, see what it kind of looks like. Blind Pass does have a new little uh, pond in the middle of it. There's Captiva and all that restoration that they did. And the sand is somewhere, not where they left it, that's for sure. But believe it or not, this beach was actually closed for a while because of erosion, but luckily it's back open. Let's go see what we can find. It looks like the first thing I'm gonna pick up and examine appropriately is a Florida fighting conch. Just kind of taking a peek at that. And there's that little pond and that's in the middle of Blind Pass Beach now. And you will notice the red tide had been here, so you may see some of that dead fish. I am not experiencing anything right now, nothing at all. No burning, coughing, nothing. It is perfectly fine. It looks a little, <laughs> well, there's a couple dead fish laying around, but you know what? It's not gonna prevent me from walking around and having the best time ever. Another Florida fighting conch. Okay. So, so far, you know, relatively expected. Here's a Florida prickly cockle. And I guess at the end of the day, this, not too many people have really been here. The island's been closed. I mean, if you've lived here, you've had the opportunity to go beachcombing. But for people like me, I stayed away until it was okay to come. And I knew that I had legal, safe parking. 
Here is a hinged calico scallop. I was, one of the things I was really looking forward to coming to Sanibel was looking for scallops. I've been missing the Sanibel scallops. And would you look at this? There's a crown conch. It was weird. It literally was just kind of sitting there. This, it was huge. Look at this. It's beautiful, the color on that side. So I did spend a little bit of time cleaning that up. We'll take a peek at that at the end of the video. And so there's that barrier. If you've ever been here before, there was kind of that, that wood fence. And for the most part, it survived. And in this particular area, there does tend to be a little bit of a congregation. A little bit of a pile of shells. We have this lightning whelk. Oh, we're getting a little bit of a show here. So here are two osprey. They are some of our shorebirds that typically dive and eat fish. So it's always fun when you see the wildlife doing its thing. Now, this area right here, there was a huge refurbishment project that went on last year. And so this that wall is all new. All these rocks are new. And man, it's a good thing because... I think Captiva might have been cut off from Sanibel if that had breached. So luckily that stayed intact from that hurricane. And would you look at that massive lump? I've seen pictures of Crown Conk that big, but I have i don't think I've ever actually held a massive hunk of Crown Conk like that. Really cool. And lots of other half buried things here. Luckily it's just shells. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna take a peek, see if there's anything that I really should start digging out of here. Oh, back up on the beach. And we have a critter we do. So that is a Florida fighting conch with its little inhabitant inside. Oh, here's another. Because yes, the tide is out at this point and it will be coming in. So we'll help a, we'll give those little critters a lift. Yeah, and there was, I was wondering how these houses fared. And normally you couldn't really see them. There was so much greenery and trees and everything, but now that's all been kind of stripped away. So you can really kind of see those homes. Beautiful morning though. I really am excited to be here. I was nervous, but I'm also excited. So. The goal, I, I really, I want to walk to Bowman's. I want to get up there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through just because in the past, the mangroves have been funky. So we're just going to kind of have to see, but that's kind of the goal. And I'm really, really glad that I chose to come to Blind Pass instead of going to Tarpon Bay because the very next day, now one of the other things I mentioned in the briefly in the intro was red tide. Now that is something that we're kind of struggling with a little bit here. So I go to the Florida Fish and Wildlife website and they do have a map and that is what I check and I kind of zoom in. And so I was going to Sanibel and so I was over here and you can see that the not present, so from a red tide standpoint was not over here. Over here is kind of where Tarpon Bay is and that the red tide was a little worse. This is a newscast from the very next day so I was lucky. I'm glad that I kind of stayed up in Blind Pass. It really, it was just luck, um, but there was no red tide. Dude, again, there was a couple residual fish, but it was fine. It was, it was beautiful, and I'm really, really happy and grateful to finally be out here. A lady-in-waiting Venus clam. It's almost like the wannabe of the imperial Venus clam. I'm dying to find an imperial one, but that is just a lady in waiting. Okay, garbage. Another one of the reasons I'm here is if I do see garbage, I will be removing that from the beach. So I did find myself a little bit of plastic kind of wrapped around trees and whatnot. So I managed to grab that off. Some weird stretchy stuff, a couple pieces of glass, and then also a piece of plastic. So anything that was small enough that I can kind of carry, I was going to grab that and take that with me off the beach. Here we have a real nice lightning whelk. Don't mind carrying that around at all. Gorgeous color, nice size. And this is so fun. It's like if shelling were a video game, and so the way that, you know, the shells are just, <laughs> it teases you, it's like you only got like a second 
And you just really got to be in the right place at the right time. And you could, I mean, I could have stood there for hours, but I wanted to make my way up to Bowman's. It's one of those pretty Florida prickly cockles. Yep, really fun. Kind of picking those seashells out of the water. Oh, looks like I picked an apple murex. Fantastic. Lovely little gastropod. Okay, what's our next? Is it another, yes, another scallop? That is a rough scallop. Lovely. And they call it rough because it literally has a rough surface. Now there were a couple other shellers that we I ran across and you know you stop and you chit chat and say hi about this and that. Well, one of them got super duper lucky and we managed to kind of cross paths again and she showed me her scotch bonnet. Look at that. It's like perfect. So it's not mine, but it can be found here. And that's what I just wanted to show you. And that's kind of what I have knocking around in my head. Let's look at this one more time. Cause it's so pretty. So where there's one, there could be more. And that's what's kind of knocking around in my head. Like, yay, this lady found the scotch bonnet. Super duper cool. Of course, I wish it was me, but heck it wasn't. That's okay. That means that there's other goodies here. So that's what I'm thinking is there's other, maybe a scotch bonnet, maybe a genonia. Who knows, right? You just never know when those things are going to pop up. And in the meantime, we'll just continue to pick up things like this lightning whelk. What else is here? Yep, another lightning whelk. Some beach stuff in there. Now from a, I would say this is a pretty typical day on Sanibel. Like there's lots and lots of shells. Um, they're nothing really exotic yet per se, but still like a typical, this is a just a normal, regular, awesome day on Sanibel. Yep, just a normal, regular, awesome lightning whelk. Fantastic. Oh, one of the zigzag arcs. You know, I was also thinking that I've never found a hinged one of these. This is also known as a turkey wing. I've never seen a critter and I've never seen a hinged turkey wing. Hmm, something for me to look for. Oh, now what I like about this particular shell is its size. So we got a big honk and whopper of a lettered olive. Fantastic. And a little auger. Wonderful. I see a little jam, um, a jam, a little shell jammed in the aperture. So I know it is safe. There's nothing in there. Oh man, it's pretty. I'm having such a great time, but I really do want to make it up to Bowman. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute and let you all enjoy some beach time. Yep, some big old shells. We got a big old lightning whelk there. Yep, two big lightning whelks. I'm trying to kind of like get my bearings. And um, it's hard just because, well, I haven't been here for a while. And obviously the island has completely changed. Like your landmarks, like where it used to be places. I, you know, that was never there. I don't know where I am. I'm just not sure. And you know, it is what it is. I, I just, I know I'm somewhere between Blind Pass and Bowman's. And so we're just going to creep around and see what we can find. Here is a paper fig. Very, very, very white. So this has been bleached out by the sun. A lovely, a very, very white paper fig. So that's Blind Pass and we're headed I guess technically we're headed east. 
And again, just trying to kind of get my bearings. All right. Yeah. Well, we're at the beach. <laughs> we're on Sanibel. Nice little rack line. Ooh, a shark eye. Yep. Delightful little moon snail known as a shark eye. What an angel wing. Awesome. So I'm looking at the tip. That's kind of broken. Oh, well. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to keep that with that big old hole in it. But again, I'm thinking where there's one, there could be more. Oh, dear. I see some dead fish. So we'll just kind of scurry around the dead fish. Or heck, maybe we'll go back here. Look how green. Now this is more than, it's about four and a half months since the hurricane actually came through. So it's nice to see that there is, it's like the dunes are kind of recovering. It's nice to see things that are green. So I'm like I said, I'm still looking. I was hoping to get to Bowman's and then actually kind of walk into the beach maybe kind of see what was going on and i don't know where i am so i figured let me check okay i checked google maps and that's where i am and bowman's beach is really just up ahead so it's not too much further awesome piece of thin fingered coral really really great great example you can really kind of see those little little suckers on it thin fingered coral Oh, I do really like the Florida prickly cockle. That gorgeous color on the inside. So got Florida prickly cockle. Oh, another shell that I really like the inside color. Your buttercup lucine. Terrific. Another kind of surprise type shell. A little kitten paw. Excellent. Do you find, tend to find tons of those over on Captiva. We haven't made it over to Captiva quite yet. And the scallops. I really was so happy to, and I went, I went bananas. I picked up tons and tons of scallops. I didn't film every single one. So we're just going to do like a little, little montage of scallops. Most of the pinks, some of the orange. That nice, just the patterns. I love the ones with like little orange. Those, the ones that have those little like sunbeams on them. And then that one was like a really like strawberry color. So yeah, I did, uh, I went a little bananas with the scallops. I was happy to be here picking up those shells that I had kind of been missing. And I figured grab a couple of those kitten paws while I'm here as well. Okay, so I have made it. That's Bowman's there and well, I'm going to be thwarted. I am not going to be able to walk. I was kind of hoping to walk into the beat, into that park a little bit just to kind of check the conditions, but not going to happen. It's closed off and I'm not going to. Yeah, obviously they don't want, don't want people like me in there, so I'm not going to go. So we'll turn around, head back toward Blind Pass, but still have lots of exploring to do. Oh, managed to grab. I do like the calico clams. This one is quite lovely and hinged really pretty hinged calico clam very nice oh look at this shark eye oh ah oh. <laughs> so that is what i call a gotcha it got me it's a lot shorter than saying i'm broken but i'm gonna make you bend down and pick me up and check me out anyway and then I saw this little path. I'm like, I, I, like, I just wanted to see the island. I wanted to see stuff. So I kind of followed this path. And there was another kind of like trail behind there. But nothing really to see per se. So heading back toward the water. And again, it's really nice to see that there's greenery here. And beach friends. Look, this is where my heart like stops. I'm like, oh. <gasps> No. And it was like, I'm excited and sad, you know, because the seahorse, it died, obviously, but at least I got to find it. And so this is crazy mix of emotions going on. Like I, wow, I never in a million years would even have thought to think to look 
for a seahorse. I, I just never even occurred to me. I have found, my husband and I found one live one once in the over three years that we've been here. So this is really, really special. And again, it was this mix of emotions. I'm kind of melancholy and, but it's just magical and beautiful. And look, I, you know, I can't help that it has died, but at least I got to find it. Wow. Wow. So I have my little container and I'm definitely, I'm going to treat this like, I'm just so excited and it's just so delicate and well, are there more? And so that's again, you know, once you find one, you never know. Oh gosh. Okay. So obviously it's most of one, you know, it's, it's kind of missing its little rib cage and it's kind of missing its head. But for me, it's so special and unique that I'm going to keep that. So I put that in the little container as well. And now I'm thinking really like, how many other ones are there? There's another one. Wow. All right. This one is intact. It's got its whole head, its whole tail. Let's see if we can get this in focus. That's amazing. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of speechless in my head. I it was just so magical and incredible and another one. All right, this guy or gal, you know, it's kind of missing its head, but I'm going to keep it anyway because this is such a special thing thing. I mean, this is just a crazy event that happened. So what I'm kind of thinking that happened, and I can just imagine the massive waves from the hurricane kind of pushing things over. And I think these critters got stuck here. So I do think that this happened from Hurricane Ian. There's not really been a lot of people on the island beachcombing. It's hard to get here unless you live here. So that's what I'm thinking. I think that these are, these are still from Hurricane Ian. And here's another one. So I finally got the eye now. Now that I've found a couple, now I kind of know that texture pattern that I'm kind of looking for. Wow. I, I just, I can't believe it. I mean, to find one is just amazing. And then to be fortunate enough to just keep finding them. Well, wow, 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 wow. So just kind of show you where I am. I'm definitely back up off the water. And this line of stuff, this rack line here, that's where I'm kind of finding all these seahorses. So that's where I'm gonna kind of concentrate. There's some fish bones. There were tons of dud fish. And that's why, like I said, I think a big wave or waves, multiple waves come push all this stuff here. And that's where it has been ever since. Wow, another incredible, I, wow. That's all I've really got to say. I'm just buzzing with excitement. I can't believe this happened. And I'm all by myself. Like there's no one here to share any of this with. So believe me, super duper excited to finally share this with you. Now here's a puffer fish. So again, kind of reinforcing my theory of what I think happened here. And I got news for you. Those spikes in that puffer fish were sharp. So they are not messing around. We found ourselves not going to keep that. I am not in the market for a puffer fish. Still looking down, still see if I can find any more of those horses. And I'm going to look and every square inch of this particular rack line. Here is another one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And they're in just such great condition too. I know I found a couple of them that were kind of missing their heads. Wow. Right? Just... Wow. So yeah, any plans that I had um, went out the window. I was staying here until I finished kind of combing this area. I did have different plans. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm not leaving until I've scoured that entire, this entire rack line. So it's beautiful. I'm buzzing. I'm just so excited to be here. Just really, really magical. Here is another one. And this one was just kind of sweet and sad. It's, it's a little bit more like tucked up tightly. Oh, but beautiful, right? I know it, it's one of, like, what am I going to do? Leave it there? 
so it's sad and gorgeous and it just is what it is right so dare I say it was worth the wait for me to come over to Sanibel so there's more of that stuff that's the area they I kind of found them in and I did I looked all of it any of that particular material that I saw I went through just to kind of you know, increase my chances of not leaving anything behind because this was just incredible so much so I actually left a little message from the beach so here's me I was just thinking well how lucky I am of course because I just picked up all those seahorses and I got to come back to Sanibel and I'm here and I'm so excited about everything and I'm thinking about the video and how I'm gonna make the video and share everything with you and oh man you guys who go shelling and you have your great finds I get it sometimes you send it to me and you're like look what I found I get it that's how I'm feeling right now I just want to share so anyway just just a message from the beach letting you know that I appreciate you so yeah at this point I'm pretty excited I'm hoping I'm gonna run into some of my other shell friends that I met you know over at blind pass when I started just so I could share the seahorses look at that Florida prickly cockle that is gorgeous beautiful <gasps> another shark guy all right is it gonna trick me oh yeah wow oh man beautiful <laughs> All right, 75% of a shark eye. It's still impressive and I'm still keeping it. Cool shell. Oh no, critter. Okay, so I think that this is a thornback cowfish. I don't know for certain. That's just kind of a guess, but just something else. I had seen that and I thought it might actually be a part of a turtle, um, maybe a turtle scoot, but you're not allowed to keep anything turtle. Lots of stuff you're not allowed to keep super protected. So. Even if I was allowed to keep that fish, again, not in the market for a dried up cowfish, so. But this bay scallop, on the other hand, that I probably will consider keeping for sure. Another one of the lovely scallops we can find over here. Awesome, awesome bay scallop. Oh, check this out. So I pick it up, it's a rough scallop, and I thought it was broken, but it's not. So the animal, was injured at some point and managed to repair itself. So the shell is actually bent. How cool is that? So it's not broken, it's just bent. Weird, right? So that makes it special and definitely keeping that weird bent rough scallop. Wow, okay, so at this point I'm thinking, all right, it, I've spent enough time here. I have definitely, my afternoon is completely changed. I had other plans, but I still can't help stopping and marveling at some of the things I'm kind of coming across like this shell pile here oh there's a broken angel wing look at this out of I don't know why like why all of a sudden is there this massive shell pile and I'm going to say if I had to guess I'm going to say it was probably at least a foot deep I mean it just kept going and going so yeah you could have plopped yourself here had yourself a good old time again depending on what you were in the market for all right, looks like I have spied something that I'm going to want to hold on to. This little slipper snail and this auger. So that's what I decided to keep out of that massive pile. And I'm just going to keep it moving. Lettered olive. Awesome. Nice, shiny, pointy lettered olive. Oh, and a piece of a shark guy that apparently I picked up as well. All right, so now I'm kind of like, all right, I know that the tide came in and I'm not seeing a lot of beach up there. I'm seeing mostly blue. Okay, and this is something I've literally told you guys about, kind of know about your surroundings, know about the tide because you could get cut off. However, not to worry. In this case, you can pop up just a little bit over, a little closer to the land and you can traverse this. It's not exactly easy going, but you can walk it. It's absolutely passable. And then I just normally am not able to see any of the homes. Normally this is all lush and green and you, you're not able to see through here. So I just kind of stopped, took a peek and you know, I do absolutely realize what is going on around me. And so it's this crazy juxtaposition of what's going on, like come here, spend your money enjoy yourself um but you know just keep in mind that there's people repairing and 
trying to clean up after an absolutely crazy, devastating hurricane. So this is, again, that area that survived the hurricane, no problem. So Captiva was not cut off from Sanibel. And you are, once the tide comes in, you can traverse it. You're going to have to walk up along the road instead of walking on the beach. So just depending on the tide. And since I was up here, I got, took another look at the lazy flamingo and oh just heartbreaking so yeah talk about a range of emotions right but i wanted to come i wanted to give sanibel my money i wanted to help out where i could here's some of more of those cottages that used to just be right on the beach and some of them are gone some of them are missing part of the actual building so that is something you will see. You'll hopefully get to witness some of the rebuilding if you do come to visit. So it is blocked off for your safety. And then the Mad Hatter was next to that and that appears to be missing as well, or at least gone for now. So I figured it was time for me to scurry, let somebody else take a crack at my parking spot. Um, but there were actually a couple spots left and overall, man, I think Sanibel has done an amazing job at cleaning up. I do think Fort Myers Beach has a lot more cleanup than Sanibel does, but frankly, because it's got a lot more buildings. That was where we was going to have lunch. I wanted to stop and have lunch and support one of the businesses here to find out, at least for now, where what is open. I would head over to the Sanibel Captiva Chamber of Commerce. And you can kind of see what's open. I wanted to go over to the Blue Giraffe. And it's going to be, Mud Bugs is open, really, really good. So that Blue Giraffe food truck. That's what I wanted to try to have lunch, but I spent too much time looking for seahorses. And I had a meeting, so I had to leave. And this might be a good time to kind of shamelessly plug myself. If you like this kind of content and you want to support me, you can head over to Patreon and support me, monetarily support me to go and do things like this. So Sanibel is still cleaning up. Another, I just love the causeway and seeing this water as I leave the island. But just keep in mind, you're probably going to also encounter a couple cranes and a couple of construction vehicles as we continue to rebuild and get back to where we need to be. So I did remove a little bit of garbage from the beach, 0.52 pounds. And in total, since I've been keeping track, I've removed a little over... 24 pounds of garbage from the beach. So what kind of day did we have? Well, I did pick up some duck clams, some of those lady in waiting Venus clams, the giant Atlanta cockles, some Florida prickly cockles, yellow prickly cockles, the scallops, the calico scallops, a couple of bay scallops in there. I just went a little bananas because I was so excited to be on Sanibel. Did get a couple knicker nuts, some of those calico clams, a piece of coral, that thin fingered coral that weird rough scallop, some paper figs. I did pick up a couple of those, a couple of lettered olives. Also got some murex, some lace murex, looks like a beat up one, and some apple murex, a couple of turkey wings, some shark eyes, some lightning whelks, a couple augers, some Florida fighting conks, some cool crown conks too, that big honking one, and the other one that we're gonna take a peek at. <gasps> and the seahorses, that was just unbelievable. What did you think? Did you have that same reaction? I kind of had that like sad, magical, happy kind of feeling with the seahorses. I'm not sure what it was, but it really was something that has left an impression on me. I will remember this day for the rest of my life. Now, remember that kind of slimy crown conch that we found a little bit earlier? Well, I have picked up enough slimy shells to know just a little bit of bleach goes a long way. So I did soak this in 100% bleach and ta-da! So I do know what to do with shells. The seahorses on the other hand, I haven't done anything with. I'm gonna figure that out because I wanna make sure that they come out perfect. Patreons, thank you so very much for coming along with me, supporting me and allowing me to go out and do things like this, helping me with the parking. I'm sorry, next time, hopefully I'll get to buy some lunch and support one of the local businesses. Next week, we're going to Key Waden. And if you like cones, I'm gonna recommend you watch. It's a good one. Have yourself a great week and I'll see you again next Sunday.